they are homeless. They have become international uh, homeless people. They can remain in the United States, which uh, brought them there. They cannot go home. And then now they're here temporarily. But uh, the problem is uh, these people need to be among their own kind of people. And they need to be in a place where there's a, a Uyghur's community to give them social support. They're here, we welcome them, but they, they still look for a place where they can realize their full social freedom. Freedom to speak their language to others, freedom to find uh, wives for themselves, because unless they have that opportunity to be with their own people, to love, to have a family, their physical freedom is not enough. So the most difficult problem that I see with these Uyghurs, only six of them, is the problem of social isolation. Now they're going to school at the Palau Community College to learn English, a little history about our people. But they seem to lack the social outlet to socialize with their own people. These are people whom I believe are not uh, similar to a lot of the people in the Western world. These are Muslims. And their faith has sustained them through the ordeal of being a prisoner. But that faith is unique because they cannot marry non-Muslims. And that's the biggest problem that they have. Every male, every female need um, a partner. Palau welcomes them. Uh, we have compassion for them. I haven't seen any social movement uh, against them, except, except for a few voices of politicians, not questioning their temporary resettlement in Palau. They're questioning the process. Uh, but Palau did do this perhaps out of innocence because we didn't pay attention to the external uh, conditions and forces. We simply took them in as people without a home where they can be released from prison to live in. And the second best place that they can live in besides a Uyghur's community is Palau.